Well, now it's time to start building your front uh, radiator support. Uh, the way this was before, I can't use any of the other structure because your radiator is so much bigger in this one. So what I've done is I fabricated these uh, some posts out of 16 gauge. I've double backed it here to where it's uh, extra thick right there. I've got some uh, mounts I had here off another build, and I'll put me a little foot on the bottom of that and put this mount in here and insert this in there. I got another one I'll insert in here. Well, here they are. Look pretty nice, don't they? And then once I get them installed, I'm going to uh, weld them in and uh, plug weld them. And then I'll come back and add some uh, supports between here. But I won't put them in yet because I'm going to design something around your uh, radiator probably. Uh, radiator mountain brackets or something. And then I'll turn them into the supports. So, uh, that's kind of how it's going to look. Alright Bruce, I'm at a little fork in the road on your front end here. I got both these mounts fabricated and I've been modifying your radiator support, coming up with a way to, uh, that I can mount that in here and uh, structurally make this thing still hold off its own weight because I have to have a tie bar across these the way these struts I'm putting in here are, are installed. Uh, the struts I've made, I've tried to make them look uh, period correct for the car and I think I did a pretty good job. They look factory perfect on there. But what has happened is if they were out another, uh, say about another inch, three quarters of an inch, then uh, it would line up dead center of your frame rails. It's going to give me a little more room for both of these uh, uh, condenser mount, uh, hose mounts and uh, make the whole overall thing uh, more adjustable and just be better. But in doing so, instead of me just tacking these in place where they're at, that's going to require me to tear the whole front end off and I'm going to have to get in here in our fresh air system. Now this is what I'm going to do for your uh, intake. I'm going to run your uh, breather over into here and uh, down into here and build me some kind of filter inside here and then you're going to have ram charged cool air in this factory original duct here. And All right, I got your inner fender out here and uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I was talking about the fork in the road. I had this ready to go in there and just tack weld right in place. But it's very beneficial to the, the job and uh, easeability of working on this uh, vehicle later on with the air conditioner lines and stuff like that for me to sink this down inside this inner fender uh, about an inch or so, three quarters to an inch. And that's going to require me to uh, have to do some modifying on this. And uh, I've got all this cut out so I can sink it down in there, the uh, about an inch that I had talked about. And uh, you can see how nicely that's going to fit in there. It took a little bit of time to cut this out, and I cut this where I could fold a lip back and another lip for here so that I could secure it real nice. And uh, now that it sits down in here, that's going to put this directly in the center of the frame rail. It's going to give me more room for my air conditioner lines, my coolant lines and uh, just everything involved in, in the middle here. But it just took a little more work than mounting on the side of this, which I could have done and built outriggers on the frame rail, but it would have made everything way too tight. And uh, this will be stronger, better, and more clearance. All right, now you can see how I've got that inserted in there. And uh, weld all the way around, weld inside, and that's extremely strong. And uh, got it in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mock all this up. You can see how my mount is looking here. So that's gonna be, uh, Super strong here, but I've still got some uh, plating to do here, here, all inside of here, all inside of here. And you can see how that bottom is all heat up. I'll probably do an overlay over that once I figure out exactly where uh, I need to go for this uh, radius arm. I mean, upper control arm right there. All right, I want to show you how these front strut bars are looking. So you can see that that one's going to look factory. Time I get all that painted black and uh, dress all the stuff up and I'm going to do a little different work on those uh, washers and mounts uh, that's going to look completely factory right there. I widened it up so I can get my other radiator in there and uh, and now I'm fixing to work on that cross tie bar. Now Bruce I've got those inner supports installed all fabricated and installed in your inner fenders and that's what's going to hold all the weight of your car. I had to totally redesign what was in there and make the parts look like the 50 model so that they, they uh, they match the uh, car and the uh, conversion we're doing here. There's a lot of times you'll see people do conversions and there are modifications and you'll see angle iron like you got from TSC or uh, just a piece of uh, flat stock and, and you can't have that. It's got to have that 50s looking theme and feel to every single piece. So I'm going to make every piece like that. So now you can see how good this hood is fitting. I've got your plumb straight down the center so that the car is exactly the body is exactly in the center of the Explorer. I shot that line off the roof because I know the roof is straight, the center of the roof is at. And then I'll adjust your sides to your wood and this will be right on the money. You can see how nice and beautifully that hood is fitting now. I've had this hood up and down a gazillion times. 
every time I've done any modifications on like these uh, strut bars and stuff, um, I've had to take this thing completely apart. Then I put it completely back together, put every nut, every bolt in every hole, tighten them down, line it all back up just to make sure that I've got an exact location. Uh, in doing so, I was able to make both your mounts are exactly the same height, both your bushings are exactly the same thickness, and it is exactly the right relationship to the body within a millimeter. So I was very pleased to have that in place. When I made your bushing mounts, I added a shim underneath them. That way I can go down as well as going up. Uh, right now it's dead on the money, but you never know once we take this apart and put it back together, we not might need that movement to go down. So I always add a shim under all my mounts or bushings or whatever I make. That way I can always go down if I need to, so I don't think I will. Then I'm gonna come in here and put you a tie bar. You can see how close this radiator is in the exact location. And I'm so tickled, so it's in the exact location for the Explorer. It's in the exact location for the Woody, which is uh, just amazing how well it fits. And then your, uh, your top plate here that goes on here, you can see how close that fits and how beautiful that's gonna look. It's gonna look factory forward from 1950 and it's going to blend right into this Explorer just beautifully. So uh, you open this hood up, it's going to take you a minute to understand what you're seeing here. And then I'll come in here and fabricate your inner fenders the same way, and I'll do them all in the 50s thing, all this side in the 50s thing, and then all you're going to see is that uh, Explorer motor in there. So uh, it's working out just beautifully. So uh, now I'm going to get your tie bar made, and then I'm going to uh, fabricate your radiator mounts, and then we won't be welded, and i got to do your inner fenders. And then we'll start securing the body down to the uh, to the explorer.